Hello everyone. This is 360 of Opera Live. Our guest today is mezzo-soprano Janae Bridges. There she is. <laughs> you are here. I, I, I am well. I'm as well as, as one can be, I think. <laughs> Ooh, I love your background. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is That's my really art. Great. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for being here with us today. I know it's been a really hectic two weeks, uh, so I really appreciate um, you taking the time and being here with us. Absolutely. No, thank you for having me. Thank you for, for having me. I'm, I'm happy and excited to... Um, talk. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna the plan is I have some questions prepared. And then I'm gonna leave some time at the end uh, for a QA. and a I'm sure people will have lots of questions. So I want to make sure we okay. have time, time for that too. So to start, awesome. I wanted to start a little bit by the beginning of your story, because I recently watched what I'm sure a lot of people have with the quarantine. Uh, Michael Jordan's, um, well, it was not just Michael Jordan's, but the Chicago Bulls, the, um, the, the Last Dance, uh, the series. And I'm so interested in sports psychology, especially yes. with the case of someone like Michael Jordan. And this leads me to you and your story and your background as a basketball player. And I think it can be very interesting to talk a little bit about how that background, if that back, if you feel like that background helped you as far as your performing. Um, and yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. So my, my sports background and specifically my background with basketball <laughs> has been so helpful not only to my life and career as an opera singer, but just life in general. Um, mm -hmm. there, there are so many parallels with opera and, and sports, and one of them being um, just the discipline that it takes, yeah. the extreme discipline. Um, I'm very grateful to have had experience to know what it felt like before, you know, stepping into opera to get up in the morning and, and have rituals so that, you know, I'm able to be in a space, a healthy space to, to do what I need to do to perform and, and, mm -hmm. and do it to the best of my ability. So basketball instilled just such great discipline in me. Um, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> I, I, I try to do that <laughs> with singing. It's kind of difficult right now. Um, mm -hmm. But practicing the dedication, um, also the teamwork. Basketball is a team sport. So, you know, while I was perfecting my shot and my defense and everything, when it came down to it, I was part of the team and we, we had to come together to ultimately win the game. So, you know, singing opera and, and being a performer is very similar. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what I need to do to um, be in the, the best vocal place, the best mental place. But when I step on that stage and in rehearsals with my, with my colleagues, um, it really is a team effort. You know, it, it's, it's more than me. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, you know, the conductor, the director. Yeah. The, the stage hands, the um, costume department, the makeup department. So like just knowing how to, uh, to be a part of a team was super beneficial mm -hmm. um, for me. And I think with opera, it can be very tricky because we are so, um, <laughs> we kind of have to be selfish in a way. Like we, we're focusing on ourselves, on our, on our voice, on our language skills. Like mm -hmm. it's about us, you know, and 
And so it, there's a fine line. Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. much as I have to focus on myself to, to deliver and be the best that I can be, I also know that I can't do this alone and I don't want to do it alone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, you know, my sports background really helped with that. It also helped with knowing how to lose. And mm -hmm. that might sound funny, but in an athletic game, somebody has to lose. Somebody yeah. wins and somebody loses. And while it might feel really, really um, difficult, uh, you know, this concept of losing, you always learn and you think, okay, I remember when I played, I used to think, okay, this really sucks. Like we should have won that game. I should have made that shot. Um, but what can I do and how can I do better to win the next game? So, yeah. you know, it's just like opera, like you win some and you lose some. Um, you have some performances that are just like, ooh, I nailed that. And then others that are just like, dang, I was, I was not on my mm -hmm. A game, but it's okay. Like, as long as you can come away, um, first of all, forgiving yourself <laughs> and, uh, and being gracious with yourself and then saying, okay, what can I do better? You know? Yeah. And that's, I think that's just such the beauty of, um, life actually. Mm -hmm. Life mm -hmm. is clearly not perfect, but mm -hmm. we have the power to um, to just be better. Yeah, you know, to be better, and that's just something that I've been really thinking about a lot lately. Um, yeah. But for basketball and opera, I just there's so many parallels, and that is a that's a really um, it's a gift that I I'm thankful for that I I, I learned how to lose, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and actually to not take things personally at the yes, same time which is that's super important it's just it's so it's difficult it it yeah. is but um a lot of times things are just not personal and you have to mm -hmm. learn how to brush it off and and say okay i'm ready for the next <laughs> for mm -hmm. the next game mm -hmm. um so those are a few things so yeah. yeah, no, that's wonderful. Thank you. So what are I know you're still very active physically. And I think that's super cool. Can you share with us? Um, yes. A bit what types of exercises you do these days? And why and how they do they contribute to your singing? Mm, yes, that's very important. Um, so I am still very much into exercising. Um, and Mostly because it for me it just it makes me feel good. I uh, carry a lot of stress, <laughs> and so it just helps me to release. Um, but it's super helpful for singing because as a singer, I am my instrument, mm -hmm. and so I, I I look at it as because I'm my instrument, and singers like we physically are our instrument. We have to keep ourselves in tune just like a clarinet would, just like a flute would, everything affects our, our, our instruments and our bodies. So working out for me just keeps me in tune. And the stage is so demanding. I mean, in, in 2020, we are required of a lot <laughs> yeah. as singers. So to simply just be able to move, um, for me, requires being active. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of um, self body weight work. Mm -hmm. um, so I know, uh, I know of singers that are kind of afraid to do that, like it'll create tension and muscles where you don't want it. But mm -hmm. I've done a lot of researching and a lot of experimenting with different exercises. And I find that as long as you're stretching before and after and breathing mm -hmm. through the exercises, um then yeah I, there's a stalker I don't know if you saw my PSA on my Instagram but I have a stalker so that's probably yeah I did I or or what or just ignore <laughs> um she, she's a cyber bully anyways won't give it whatever to that. just ignore <laughs> exactly so um yeah since my body is my instrument I do a lot of self body work and I do push-ups I do a lot of crunches um what else? I, I also, I try to use like outdoor space as much as possible. So just like doing mm -hmm. quick sprints and stuff like that to get the breath going and to feel my breath and to just like 
breathe deeply because when singing uh, a whole role on stage, it's it's really like you're playing a game, you know, like a basketball game, a whole sport. So you have to really find ways to access your breath deeply. Mm-hmm. So yeah, those are some of the exercises I do. And I try to work out like three to four times a week. It's been kind of hard during this time. I'm just like not as motivated. Let so. me see if I can block this person because- this Yeah, is... block them. They'll, they'll probably yeah. create another fake name because that's what they've been doing for a few months now. Um, but That's it, reported. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> it happens. Then that's something that also people don't talk about. Like there are, the internet is an amazing thing right now because we can stay connected like we're doing here. But there are also evil and very crazy mentally unwell people out there uh so i've been dealing with that and it's just like it's a part of it Mm -hmm. what can you do Mm -hmm. so talking about this exercise so i assume all of all of these are exercises that also serve you as you're traveling the world that you can just do in your hotel room yep Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i know it's super helpful because um gyms are not always afforded so having you know just self body exercises you can do anywhere and i've helped like a lot of my opera singer friends um with different exercises and it's helpful and you just do what you can you know it's not it's nice also because you're not like competing with anyone you you literally just do what your body does Mm -hmm. i have uh i'm just really curious about something uh, when you, uh, because we were just talking about breath and, um, you know, thinking about breath while you're working out and obviously it has a, um, you know, a stress relief benefit, but when you're working out, do you also think in your, br- about your breath in terms of singing? Since, yes, since actually, <laughs> I like yeah. that you, I like that you asked that because I probably look like a crazy person sometimes when I'm working I out. That's why I asked. I, I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, no, because I um, I think it's just very helpful. And I remember like when I was younger and really obsessed with uh, Destiny's Child and Beyonce, which I still kind of am. Um, I remember watching something that uh, talked about them working out and singing at the same time. And I just remember, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I want to try that. So uh, I've been actually doing that for a long time and it really helps like, because, so I sang Carmen last summer in San Francisco Mm -hmm. and I was all around that stage, dancing, Mm -hmm. running, like Mm -hmm. singing on my back. It was very athletic. Um, So to prepare for that, I just, I I did my exercises. I ran, did my body weights and sang at the same time. And it Mm -hmm. was super helpful. Yeah, um, I know musical theater um, actors, triple threats, do that. They go through all their songs in the treadmill. I know that's a thing. I haven't done yep. it yet. <laughs> it is a thing. One day. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely um, helps. So I, de- I advise like all uh, singers, but also just everybody who wants to stay healthy to exercise, but definitely singers like to find, to access your core and the deepest parts of your breath, Mm -hmm. work out and sing at the same time. Just try it. Why not? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So uh, moving on. So I wanted to bring up a little bit um, the last two weeks, there's been a lot of panels and live conversations. Um, You've been the host of one of them with LA Opera, which was fantastic. I shared it. I urge Thank everyone you. to to watch it. And it's it's really it's the best thing we can do is to hear directly. Um, mm. you know, the the problematics and the conversations and and thank you for doing that. Um so what do you think? Uh I know there's been a little bit this feeling of like, okay, you know, it's been two weeks of having these conversations, it's great, what's next? You know, so I wanted to ask you, what do you think um, is a positive thing that we can take from all these conversations that are being had, but at the same time, what can we do next in the opera industry? Action, action, action. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that that conversation has seemed to spark, mm -hmm. um, spark mm -hmm. a change in our industry, um, a much needed change in conversation. Um, but you're right. It, it's, it's more than, it's more than talking about it. Action is absolutely necessary. And for me, I mean, I feel like that panel, they, they answered everything. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And one of the biggest takeaways that I got from it was when my friend Karen Slack said, I'm not asking for you to give up your seat. I'm asking for you to move over so I can sit in mine. And I think that is just like, that sums it all up. So I hope and pray that, you know, arts administrators and general directors, they take that and they say, okay, what, what do we need to do? First of all, we need to look at ourselves and say, what are we doing wrong? Why aren't there, uh, why don't our audiences look like the cities that we represent? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, to first sit down and say what the problem is. Then two, say, okay, what do we actually want to achieve? And then go for it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that definitely taking action by um, talking to people that don't look like you <laughs> is super important because if you have like all white men that are running something, it's just like, how can you think outside of what you actually know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's not meant to be offensive or anything. It's just like the reality. It's I just think that a reality, yeah. It's yeah. a reality. So first of all, we, we need to diversify um, these people that are the powers that are making decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also need to like, not just say we're going to have outreach and stuff, but because outreach is fine, it's nice, but a lot of people just don't have resources. So like, what can we do to, to change that? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. outreach is great, but it's not enough. So mm -hmm. literally like doing whatever we can to dismantle, um, to dismantle like these systems that have, have, have oppressed so many people, you know, in whatever way that you, in whatever way that you can. And, yeah. and challenging people to uh, just think outside of the box, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm working on, I have some projects that I'm working on with, with opera companies to help advise mm -hmm. um, because, because we need help, like people need help. You don't know what you don't know. But mm -hmm. I think the first step is to like being open to uh, learning yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and admitting that, that you're wrong. Yeah. That's the first step. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awareness. Which awareness, which I, I'm really thankful. I've gotten so much amazing, positive feedback from um, many companies, many people in high positions saying how much that talk helped and opened their eyes and that they are ready to enact change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And so, as, so you're talking about um, upcoming uh, events. Oh, first I want to, so I think about something you just said and this awareness and kind of stopping and looking and learning, I think mm -hmm. in a way as, <laughs> You know, we're all struggling with everything right now. The world is upside down. But in a way, I think um, this pandemic, this crisis has really helped everyone to stop and think, you know, and, and I'm glad um, people are home and listening and watching and have, you know, time to read and yeah. and I think that's also very important. Um, and so <laughs> with this being said, with coronavirus and COVID, um, you, you've also been a part of uh, a lot of digital 
concerts and live mm -hmm. streams. There's one happening tomorrow, right? Yes, the Omni Arts uh, Foundation is mm -hmm. putting on a concert. And I think it's, who else? Isabel Leonard is hosting it. Uh, Will Liverman mm -hmm. is singing. Who else? Uh, Brandy Sutton. There's actually a lot of, sorry, I don't want to start naming names because I'm going to forget. But yeah, I, I have definitely um, been doing some virtual concerts and recitals. I, I've kind of shied away from doing a lot of them because I'm just not really in a place to to do like full recitals, which is actually how the LA Opera um, panel came about. They asked me to do a recital mm -hmm. and I said, thank you, but I would rather like speak. Um, yeah. So yeah, but when I do sing, I mean, obviously it's, it's, um, it's helpful for me. And in turn, hopefully it's healing to someone else, but I'm really interested in um, when I do sing um, and participating like in fundraising formats because mm -hmm. there are so many people that need, you know, need help. Opera singers have been stripped of their jobs um, and are really, really struggling. So any way that I can help and use my platform is what I want to do. Um, and I have some pretty big things that are coming up. I can't actually talk about, unfortunately, but uh <laughs> you will, you'll find out sooner than later. It's like kind of epic. <laughs> uh. And it's on, it's on the same, it's on the same lines of just, of, of helping. I know I really, wish I could say, but I don't um, know. a couple weeks, okay. I will, wait a couple okay. weeks. We'll stay, I'll yeah, stay but I think tuned. It's super, yes, stay tuned. But I think it's super important um, for people to just use their, their voices and their platforms for positive, oh, are you there? Oh, I'm trying to like block people. Give me a, let's see. There oh yeah, she's gonna keep creating. Um, this person is absolutely I think, crazy. you know what I'm gonna do, um, everyone? I'm gonna turn off the comments until it's time to ask questions because this is really distracting. And, and she will, just so you know, she will ask questions. I know who this person is. She's well, been stalking but at me. least we keep it to the end because right now <laughs> I can't focus. Janae can't I know. focus. I can focus actually because I know that she, like, I knew this was going to happen because she's been stalking me, but turn them off so you I can focus. Keep, yeah, because I keep hiding the video from them and they come back with another yeah, person. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're really mentally. So you know. I'm turning off the comments. Um, great. Oof. <laughs> and <laughs> sorry. And then I I'll, forgot I'll to tell you about that person because I, oh, no. they, I don't think about them, I mean, but they obsess over me. And so it's sad, it's, actually. It's you know, so we're going, going through coronavirus, going through Black Lives Matter, all this stuff. And they're focusing on like taking me down. What a sad person, you know? And so all I you mean, can do is pray for these they, people. They might even they, just be like, bot. I don't know. It's yeah. No, it's I, not a bot. I know exactly who it is. She, she's been doing this for like three months. Well, so. I'm proud of everyone who was uh, commenting and telling her to go away. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I, didn't I, even, looking, I didn't even They see were it. sending her off. But <laughs> she's crazy. Anyway, and her daughter, it's a, it's a duo. But anyways. Let's continue. I'll turn the comments yeah. again to everyone who's watching um, towards the end. You can also just directly hit the question mark and send us um, questions there. So oh. let's move on. Okay. Um, so, um, oh yeah. So with, with all these conversations, a big topic is uh, how do we move opera forward? How do we tell new stories? How do we tell relevant stories? And you personally have been involved in yeah. several new operas, contemporary operas, Girls of the uh, Golden West, Akhenaten. Can you tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about that process? Um, since I think, uh, at least for Girls of the Golden West, you were a part of since the beginning, correct? Yes, I was. Yes. We, we, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think it's interesting to um, understand a little bit how that process of creating a new work um, goes. And, and also after that to, you know, talk a little bit more about this idea of creating new music and telling new yeah. stories. So I love um, creating new roles and, and working with living composers and, and 
um, just being uh, a part of new music because mm -hmm. I think that it it often reflects um, most immediately the times that we're that, that we're in, and it just like gives the it gives more accessibility somehow. So um, I really enjoy also working with living composers because you can help create the role to best uh, suit you. So it's really a fun thing for me. And people often ask like, do you prefer singing the more classic roles, um, traditional roles or new music? And I, I really just love both. They're, they're different. They're very different. Mm -hmm. um, so Girls of the Golden West, we premiered in San Francisco in 2017, I believe. Maybe 18. Mm -hmm. Ah. Um, and it was just such an amazing experience to work with John Adams and, and the cast and Peter Sellers. Um, it's interesting to also, like, not agree on some things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and this is across the board, whether it be new music or, um, you know, more traditional music. It happens all the time. But when creating a role, it kind of gives you more space to and, and more permission to say, well, what do you think about this, writing it this way or whatever it may be. Um, people just seem more open to uh, change. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I just really enjoy singing and creating new roles also because you don't have like all of these preconceived notions. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, did you want to know more about like the process as well? Um, yeah, I mean, I think particularly um, Akhenaten was such oh, a yeah. widely international success with the a, a live in HD. And I mean, it's just a fascinating and hypnotizing <laughs> um, show. So yeah, yes. I think especially that show because it was very much about everything. You know, it was very much about this idea of a team, you know, the costumes, the lights, the everything. So yeah, I, we would definitely like to know more about that. Yeah, I know the pro, I mean, Akhenaten. So I did it first in 2016 in LA at LA Opera. And it was just like, it was nothing, it was like nothing that I'd done before ever. Um, it's a spectacle, the costumes, the yeah. lighting, the set. Um, it was really difficult to learn that music um, mm -hmm. because it's very repetitive mm -hmm. and we were singing in ancient Egyptian, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some English too, but mostly in a language that was just like wet. <laughs> um, but you figure out ways to, um, to learn the music like we do with everything and, and memorize with patterns. And so it was cool. And, and having obviously the conductor helping you guide, helping guide through it is absolutely necessary. Um, but I really enjoyed this production, particularly because of the leadership. And, mm -hmm. and Phelan McDermott is um, an incredible director based out of England. And um, his approach to it was just like, it was, it blew all of our minds because it was like, okay, I know you're saying this. I know this is like what Queen Nefertiti and Akhenaten do and think, but actually just like, throw that out of the window and we were like huh <laughs> what like that is completely the complete opposite of what we're trained to or how we're trained to approach an opera like mm -hmm. usually you have to know word for word translation and um you know just exactly what you're saying at all times and so with with Akhenaten it was more of like we had the bigger understanding of what was going on, mm -hmm. but we, the, the director's idea was to not like dictate every single word and every single movement because he wanted the audience to just be open to receiving and, and also for them to perceive it how they want. Like mm -hmm. we're not telling the audience what to think. We're not telling the audience what we're saying or what to believe. We kind of were going for like this hypnotic um, hypnotic approach <laughs> and and, yeah. and a lot of feedback that I got from people that saw it was just like wow 
thank you because they were able to feel in a way that they haven't before. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, doing that opera was very different because it was mostly about like just being in the moment and he would, he would hold up cue cards like, okay, vulnerability, mm. like be that. And so we would, we would tap into that emotion, whatever it meant for us individually. And somehow it would just like all gel together. Yeah. Um, mm. It was really interesting. In that, in yeah, that it was very unique for sure. And I think at the end of the day, the goal of any performance is to make people feel things and it was definitely Absolutely. definitely that Thank can you, you talk can you talk to us about the costumes please oh my god <laughs> because yeah those costumes were epic <laughs> absolutely epic i mean i was bejeweled in just like the most gorgeous jewels we wore gold leaf like real gold leaf they, I, I won't even say how much they spent on that, but it was a lot of money. Um, the costumes were heavy. My costumes were pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. I had different, um, you know, crowns. And my first crown that I wore uh, was super uncomfortable. <laughs> but the, the wigs and costume department is so amazing at the Met and L.A., but I can just remember most immediately at the Met, they did everything just to try to like help it not be so heavy so that I could sing. And right, we definitely we a achieved that. Piece can, like, exactly. Yeah. I want, in the beginning, it was like my head was doing this. So it was really kind of cutting off mm. my spine a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, but we got to a very happy place. Mm -hmm. But the costumes are just so epic and they represented, um, they were very symbolic. Yeah. Phelum, Phelum in the, um, the team, they did so much research, like years and years of research. So there were things on my costume, like, what do these baby heads mean? Like, what do they represent? The baby heads. Creepy. <laughs> the baby heads. Are yes. creepy. <laughs> but um, they represented, like, my family, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, not obviously, but they represented my family. And um, mm -hmm. the colors, the different colors, green, the greens and the purples and the golds, like they all symbolized royalty. <laughs> so, I mean, the costumes are just epic and I really wish that I could have them. <laughs> I, <laughs> because yeah. they're just so <laughs> gorgeous. They're so gorgeous. Yeah. And there was like my second act costume. That was a bit risque where I had the, um, the red train. It was sheer mm -hmm. and we were naked underneath. We weren't actually naked. They were naked suits. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my parents were like, um, especially my dad, he was like, I wasn't expecting that. Why didn't you warn us? And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. It wasn't actually me. It was a costume, but it looked very realistic. It looked very realistic. It looked yeah. very realistic. <laughs> but the point of that was, um, you know, that was our love scene. Mm -hmm. So it was just to be as... Uh, as, as as pure as and naked as possible mm -hmm. and connected in that way so I thought that was actually my favorite scene I'm a little I biased, mean but. that image with the red train those photos are just ugh, perfection yeah. yeah thank you yeah mm -hmm. I'm actually still like I, I feel like I'm just coming down from the high of that production. yeah I mean, I still haven't, because I saw it live. I want to watch, and I've seen clips, but I want to watch the whole yeah. HD version because I find that it's a completely different experience. Uh, mm -hmm. I think each one has their own magical things, but especially for something so visual like this, I really want to be able to watch the whole thing. The yeah. HD version, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, they'll, maybe, maybe the Met will play it. Maybe. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I hope so, because um, I'd like to see it again, too. So, uh, uh, so Nefertiti and all these... I like other... the way you said that. Nefertiti. Nefertiti. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Spanish. I love um, it. You've played all these iconic women. You know, I feel like mezzos get... You know, they're not maybe as many you know, lead roles, but the ones that are out there are just so powerful. 
So can you tell us what are some of your favorite of these really strong women you played? Yeah, it's, I was actually talking to my mom about this the other day because she was like, I'm so proud of you. Like, mezzos don't usually get to sing these roles that you're singing. And I thought about it and I, I said, yeah, you're right. Like, I'm really lucky. Like, I, I've worked very hard, mm -hmm. but I'm lucky that I'm, I'm, I'm now at a stage where I can play queens and, and leading <laughs> ladies. But trust me, I've done all the maids you can imagine. So <laughs> it's not, you know, I, and I'm not knocking them either. But <laughs> I'm just grateful um, that I'm able to sing these amazing roles. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my latest role that I did that I just, I'm in love with is Dalila. Dalila. Um, it's a stretch role for me. It's big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm so glad that I accepted it and that I, I got a chance to do it, even though we got cut um, short from COVID. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a role that vocally fits me like a glove and will continue um, to just feel more and more comfortable. It's, it's pretty low. It's middly, it's low, it's also high. Mm -hmm. um, so I look, for, I look forward to my voice just like filling it out more and more. But I actually love playing that character. She is so manipulative. Yeah. <laughs> like, she, to me, she's, she's like the most manipulative. Well, she's definitely like top five most manipulative. Carmen or <laughs> Dalila? Carmen. I think Dalila, because Carmen, she says in the beginning of the opera, she's just like, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. Like, don't fall in love with me. But if you do, watch out. Mm -hmm. but Delilah straight up lies like she yeah. you know yeah. she she lies she turns into something completely different mm -hmm. and I've actually experienced that in real life with someone and it's just like it's scary mm. it's really yeah. scary yeah um so with that being said I actually have so much fun playing her because there's such a journey. Like you can tap uh -huh. into so many emotions because she's so manipulative. You can be super nice one day and charming or one, one moment and then, you know, completely turn. Um, which is just really interesting. And yeah. I, I had fun playing that. So I, I look forward to playing her more. Of course, Carmen, I, I just love that role so much. Like that is a role that I, have been working on for so many years um, in different ways. Like first I started out singing just the arias on concerts and then auditions. And then I moved on to singing scenes from it. And then um, in concert with orchestra. So it's been a journey for me, that role. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it feels um, very at home now. Like I can get up and just like, sing her <laughs> which yeah. which feels good yeah which feels really good but I want to um continue to like find my own Carmen because it's been done so many times mm -hmm. um so it's all it, it's always a question of okay how is this person going to do it differently because yeah. it, it's one of those roles that can it can kind of just become like predictable um mm -hmm. so I find it really fun to just make it my own Mm, yeah. And I'm super yeah. sad that uh, that I'm not singing it at the Met, but it's okay. I believe that um, I will sing it, it there one day, and yeah. also like yeah. I I'll get to sing it more. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I also. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Please go okay. on. I'll ask later. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say that um, I really want to sing more pants rolls, actually. Ah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do because. Well, I think vocally, my voice fits actually a lot of pants roles, like the bigger pants roles, like Sesto and even um, Octavian. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people hear the color of my voice and they think, oh, it's too like rich and whatever. But Probably I. Probably depends I, on, the, on who they pair the you cast. with. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I'm putting that out there. I would love to. I would love yeah. to. And, and Alina Garancha, like, I love her so much. And I just love the way um, her career has gone. And, and I feel like our voices are quite similar. So mm -hmm. I, I've studied just, like, the roles that she's done. 
and a lot of those roles I want to do <laughs> as well. <laughs> I, I wish I could sing Rosini, but it's just, <sighs> you don't want to hear me do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it if you pay me a lot of money. I love but... <laughs> it. Like the effort that goes into it requires a bigger And contract. I'm fine with working. Like I, I'm a hard worker. I like to work, but it's just it. When it sounds difficult, mm. I, I yeah. think that's that's a sign. <laughs> that's, that's that's a really good point. So yeah. that brings me actually you saying this and and this whole idea of you know growing into a role and or even once you're already singing a role, it still having you know more room to fill it uh, the yes. more you sing it. Um, so. Can you share, do you have advice for, you know, students or young artists who tend to be, um, you know, impatient and anxious and, and hear this a lot, you know, patience, patience, and yeah. focus on your journey. And one thing is to, you know, hear it and know it, but another thing is to be able to really internalize and trust that. Um, so is there since you and you're very much still in the middle of your journey, you know, but yeah, but hmm. since you, you, you're already at least past the, you know, young artist university status. Um, is there some advice you can share? Yeah, I mean, I, I was that kind of impatient singer. Mm. So <laughs> Yeah, I think when I was a young artist, it was like, okay, I'm ready. Let's just do this. I'm ready to sing this. I'm ready to sing that. But the reality is that our voices are changing and evolving and maturing every day. Mm -hmm. And there are just roles that you have to, you have to be patient with um, and know that you will sing them, or at least that you want to sing them, but you can't force it. You just, you can't, because these two chords are so delicate and they need um, nurturing. <laughs> and for me, I, it was so hard for me, but I turned down Carmen a lot before I actually debuted it. Um, That's hard. <laughs> and it was just hard because it was like, I'm ready, I wanna do this, but I was not, <laughs> I wasn't. And I think that every singer needs to have a team. They need to have people yeah. that, know their voices inside and out, your voice teacher, coaches, um, your manager, publicists, if you have that, so that you have like these outside sources saying, okay, this is what I think. At the end of the day, like you can put yourself out there if you want, but with these people on your team that have so much knowledge and wisdom, um, it's really important to, to take them into consideration. Um, but also, like, know within yourself. Be realistic with yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I do that. <laughs> I, I, I do that more and more because it's like the more visibil visibility that you have, mm -hmm. like, the more pressure comes with that. And I just think it, the smarter you have to be. Mm -hmm. But I won't even say that. Like, you should be smart at every stage. But it, it requires, like, true honesty. Mm -hmm. with yourself and you don't yeah. if you don't know what that is for you because people can be a bit delusional honestly I, I've been delusional um it's really helpful to have have a team mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and my manager like there have been some things and he's just like not yet trust me and that's not even from a, a vocal purely a vocal perspective it's also like if you sing this you need to know that this is what they're going to ask for. And are mm -hmm. you ready mm -hmm. to like start singing Omneris? In right, to go to another, yeah. Mm -hmm. To go to that next level. Like, are you ready to do that consistently? Mm -hmm. um, and so you just have to be honest with yourself. And it just takes, it, it takes time. And if it's really meant to be and for you, it will happen. Mm -hmm. um, and, but you have to be putting in the work. Yeah, the that's time. very interesting what you just said about it's not, okay, I say yes to one Kermit and I just do it once and then that's it. You know, because I, I haven't heard a lot of people say this actually to young artists, you know, like it's not just the one run 
of that role. It's all the can of worms that you open with that. Absolutely, yeah, no, yeah. that's a great way to put it. It's the can of worms that you open. Cause, and it's not just that one role. Like if I were to say yes, for instance, to like Amneris right now, it would be, okay, now she can sing Amneris. That means she can sing, I don't even know, Azucena or Eboli. Mm -hmm. Well, Eboli is different than Amneris, but you're just opening the door to a whole different, like a, a whole nother set of drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like being a dramatic mezzo for, yeah, for, for yeah, me. Yeah. So I think that my voice is definitely going in that direction. Mm -hmm. But I want to sing for a really long time. I don't mm -hmm. want to just like hit it and quit it. Mm -hmm. um, so that requires patience. Mm -hmm. It requires consistency and practice. Um, and it just requires honesty. Yeah. You know? And, and yeah. what can you sing well now? Like what? Because if I were to sing Amneris like right now, it would just stress me out. It was stressing me out. And as singers, we deal with so much stress already, just with the nature of, of the job. Um, I don't need that added stress in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and also my vocal cords don't need that yeah. extra, like they're not, they're just not ready. No, so totally. it, it takes courage, you know, to just say yeah. no. No but, is a very important sentence. Yeah. It's a complete sentence, no. <laughs> no and that falls also in the bag of honesty and honesty is knowing yourself you know and knowing your limits your boundaries and when to stretch them and when you're just gonna put yourself in a bad situation absolutely mm -hmm. um yes so but having those people around you your team I like to call them mm -hmm. and that also for me that includes my family they're not they don't know the ins and outs of like what role is appropriate at what moment, but they know me and they know when mm -hmm. I, I'm stressed. So it's just like helpful for me to have them to say, okay, hold on, let's think through this. <laughs> Stress level, like thermometer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I would say about, you know, very anxious or not anxious, but um, ambitious <laughs> singers. Eager. Um, yeah, I mean, I think eager, it's, eager. it's very common. You know, we all we want to do this where it's that it's being eager and just, you know, being patient is not super fun. So that's, that's just the way it is. It's not super fun, <laughs> but I think it's a really good quality to have in life. For sure. For <laughs> sure. So we're getting we have like 15, uh, 12 minutes left. So I'm gonna open up the questions. Okay, just be ready. I'm just going to keep it to uh, these questions where you guys can send them directly to me so okay. I can filter them and we don't have issues. Uh, so that just so you know, if you have questions, send them on the little question mark and you can send them there. We have a couple. Let me see. Ooh, we have some great ones. Let me see. Let's start with this one. What lesson did you learn from your first big lead role experience? Hmm. That's a great question, Omar. Thank you. Um, okay, wait, so I'm trying to think what that was first. Because I've sung lead roles in smaller houses before mm -hmm. I I've, before I sang lead roles in bigger houses. So the first lead role that I sang um, was at Algiza from Norma oh. in uh, at Knoxville Opera. And that is a role that I really want to sing mm -hmm. again. I, I'm really mm -hmm. eager to do that. Whew, but it was it was a, a journey. It it's high, mm -hmm. it's long, mm -hmm. and um, it's very exposed. Bellini. Yeah. So for me, it was really like the biggest lesson that I took from that was learning how to pace. Pacing is something that. I feel like you don't learn just until you, you do it and you have to you have to learn like you can't study how to pace you have to just mm -hmm. do it and figure it out for yourself yeah. for your body for your instrument and whatever opera that you're singing mm -hmm. so for me I really learned that was my first um experience on kind of feeling like ooh, I'm not gonna make it like if if I don't <laughs> calibrate this correctly like I'm not gonna make it yeah. through this so that was the biggest lesson I learned how to pace from, mm -hmm. from, from singing at Algiza, um, learning like 
when to give more and when to when to just like hold back a little bit. And that doesn't mean like hold back in like no pressures involved ever in holding back, but um, more of like volume and power. Um, and so learning how to like not give so much power, but staying on my body, riding the air still, um, it, it definitely was a big lesson for me. Mm. And I'm able to now apply it better and, and, and more naturally, I think, for every role. Mm. And also, now I look at a role front to back before singing a note and just seeing, okay, I have three arias, three duets, one trio. Like, this is all a part of pacing, knowing, knowing, knowing your deck of cards. Having but a map, yeah. Having a map, yeah, it's mm. super important. Mm. So that was uh, probably the biggest lesson that I learned from my first big role experience. Mm. I love it. Let's see. Next question. Um, <laughs> ooh. Ooh, same person, but it's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> Any mezzo-sopranos, past or present, that inspired you? Love your work. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Thank you. Um, so many. So many. Past. My go-to, like, I have actually many go-tos, but I find myself going to Shirley Verrett mm. and just watching and listening to her. Technically, I feel like for me, she has just one of the most beautiful and like solid techniques. Mm. And, and it's very similar. Like her, our voices are different, but there are very similar qualities. So mm. I just, I love her so much. Um, um, I think I already mentioned Elena Garancha that's in the present. I, I just love her singing and I, I like watching her too because mm. like you can tell, I can tell at least that she's really concentrated on like producing beautiful sound, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And you can like sometimes just see the way she does it and I, it's helpful. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's just really cool. Um, also, Anita Rashvilishvili, I think that's how you say her name. Yeah. She's just such a powerhouse, but also she's can amazing. do anything with her voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I heard her um, last sing Delilah at the Met, and I was just like, oh, yes, go girl. <laughs> I mean, the way she sang the Pratan, the first aria, was just so beautiful and intimate. And it was like, she can go from that to literally like, oh my gosh, it's so much sound. Yeah. So I, I'm very inspired by her. Mm -hmm. um, oh, gosh, there, oh, there are so many. I know Jesse Norman is not technically a mezzo, but I listen to her Carmen and I'm just like, yes. <laughs> yes. It, <it's> just, <laughs> I listen to her everything, but her Carmen is just like so full and voluptuous. And, and the French is just parfait, mm -hmm. even though she's not French. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I love her so much. Um, Obratsova, when I'm, when I'm listening to like more dramatic or studying more dramatic, but even just like listening, uh, yeah. Obratsova, I, I just, I'm like, wow, so captivated by her. Um, and then going back even further, Risa Stevens. I love listening actually to old recordings because somehow you can like, even though the recordings are often a bit like, unclear and warbled in the sound mm -hmm. I for some reason just can connect with them and, and really hear the purity of their voices it's I, I really enjoy listening to older mm. recordings um oh gosh who else I mean there's so many Denise Graves I admire her and she's like now a mentor of mine which is crazy um but I often go back to to listening to her and actually just watching her because I think mm. she's so yeah. elegant. Yeah. Um, so those are a few. I think that's a pretty good selection. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's see what other questions do we have? Oh, what position did you play ah. in basketball? <laughs> Point, Point guard. Oh, that's a good question. Yes, I actually played um, 
a one or a two, sometimes a three, which means a point guard, but also a shooting guard. I was mostly a shooting guard. So pass me the ball. I shoot. Yes. Kobe, Kobe, rest in peace. Kobe. Mm. Yes. Let's see. Um, ch -ch -ch. Ooh. How are you able to learn and master singing in the languages you sing in? Are you bi or trilingual? <laughs> um, great question. Well, I'm still learning every day, still mastering every day. I so wish that I was uh, born with a, a language, another language. I feel like if you are, it just like opens up a whole nother world, <laughs> you know? Um, but because I wasn't, it's it's a challenge, but it's also super fun to learn languages. I I just I just do the hard work and I study. I have teachers. I actually um, have hired a French teacher right now while I'm in this time because why not? Oh, yeah. um, and I sing in so much French repertoire that French for me is probably the most important language mm -hmm. um, for me to learn and mm -hmm. ultimately become fluent in. Um, answer your question, it's I have. I have books, I have, are you there? Oh, you're there? Okay, I have books, I have apps. Yeah. Um, and actually, I something that I would like to do is um, start like a language club with people that are either fluent in the language that I'm learning and or people that are wanting to learn and literally just like learning together and having maybe mm -hmm. Zoom conversations and learning from each other. The danger with that, like, is if it's all English speakers and we'll probably default to English. So yeah. I really want to be, like, <laughs> intentional about it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, literally, I, I also want, I mean, I feel like the best way to learn a language, though, is to just go to the place where the language mm -hmm. is, is mm -hmm. existing. And so I had planned, I had so many plans this summer. I was going to sing in Aix-en-Provence. I was scheduled to sing there, and I was planning to stay and just learn French and live with a French family um, that didn't speak English. <laughs> so that is something that I am still planning on doing when, uh, when, when we're allowed to go over there. Um, yeah, but I would say that I am um, conversational in, in French, Italian, German, for sure. For sure German. Um, yeah. Mm, great. So basically study. <laughs> basically study. There's no way getting around it. Study. Be hard wow. on yourself and be okay to make mistakes and sound really, really silly. Let's see here. Oh, this is interesting. Let's see. What are your self-care regiments in keeping yourself grounded? Oh, this is my cousin actually. We have two minutes left. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's going to cut off. So, so, so much. Working out, uh, I pray, I, I try to um, do yoga when I can. For sure, yoga is very important. And surrounding pe surrounding myself with people that um, don't stress me out and, and mm. you know, that, like, inspire me. I think it's very important to be intentional about who you interact with, actually. Uh, mm. And that's not to say that I, I'm not an approachable person, but I just think that so many people are dealing with so much. And just do what you can. You know, help how you can. But really, for me, I like to do yoga, work out, take baths, pamper myself, and stay away from crazy cyber trolls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Janae, for your time, for the conversation. Eugenia, thank you. This has thank been you. so amazing. Thank and you. thank you for your platform, what you do. Oh, thank you. It's really, thank I you. love it so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for everything that you're doing. Good luck tomorrow for the Omni Arts Pro. I don't know if it's pre-recorded or not. It's pre-recorded, yeah, okay. yeah, it is. Well, still, you still, but you probably you. still get like nervous. A little bit, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for all these awesome insights. It was so interesting. Thank you to everyone who submitted questions. I'm sorry we didn't yes. get to all of them, but I'm sorry um, too. But thank uh, you for having me. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you, all. all